Hey bitches, it's me, Pallavi, and this week we're gonna talk about race, baby. Maybe if I sing, you'll hear me. What's that? They've already unsubscribed? Well, shit. So, the big question is there a scientific definition for race? The answer? No! End of episode. Ugh, fine, all right, I'll get into it, but you have to promise to listen until the end. So the reason that there's no scientific definition for race is because science is based on patterns, predictability. According to the AAPA, the American Association of Physical Anthropologists, the ultimate people watchers, racial categories do not provide an accurate representation of human biological variation. Groups of individuals can be differentiated by patterns of similarity and differences, but these patterns do not align with socially defined racial groups such as whites and blacks, or continentally defined geographic clusters such as Africans, Asians, and Europeans. Homo sapiens, our species, yes, homo, came to exist through hundreds of thousands of years of fucking and sucking. Our genes are too mixed up to divide us up genetically by race. To give you context, chimpanzees, which are our closest relative, share 99% of their DNA with us. If you were to pick two random humans off of the planet, they would share 99.9% .9 of their DNA with each other. So then why do we look so different? Well, because of the environment. Our phenotypes, or the way we look, gradually changes as the geography changes. There is no presence or absence of these characteristics defined by race. There's no on and off switch. And this is true even when it comes to things that are normally associated with race, such as skin color, hair, facial features. There are too many genes involved with creating each of these physical characteristics within an individual. For example, skin color, which people generally associate with race, is the product of the evolution of at least 37 genetic lo los -si los -i los -lo -lo -ki? Lo -ki? Fucking the position of genes on chromosomes, local environments, migration of population, and gene flow into and out of populations. So if how we look is this big continuum, then the lines you choose to separate races are arbitrarily chosen. As arbitrarily as your boyfriend picks out tampons for you at the store. How the fuck are you gonna pick a tampon with wings? That shit doesn't even exist. You are a 32 year old man. You should know by now how to plug my pussy and get me ice cream. You're dividing up this continuous ocean of humanity at randomly chosen points to fit your purposes. Slavery! <clears throat> Whew. Let me put it a different way. Each of us has two parents. If you do the math, that means 10 generations ago, we each had 2 to the 10, or about a thousand ancestors alive at that point. 20 generations ago, about a million, and so on. The problem is when you get to 40 generations ago, that's a trillion ancestors. That's more people than existed on the planet at that time. Which means that some of those ancestors had to be the same person. Between the mathematical models of Joseph Chang, a statistician at Yale, and looking at DNA like computational biologist Peter Ralph of USC and geneticist Graham Koop of UC Davis, all indications point to the most recent common ancestor of all humans currently alive today as having lived only 3,000 to 3,400 years ago. That means they were our great, 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 great. Grandparents. <laughs> you think we should send them a postcard or something? I just feel like we never call. So, we are family. Okay, so we're all more closely related than some of us would like to admit. And some of those people are rogue ass scientists who use their expertise as a weapon to justify racism. I'm talking about people like James Watson, who in 1962 won the Nobel Prize alongside his partners, Francis Crick and Maurice Wilkins, for discovering the double helical structure of DNA. James Watson has said some stupid ass shit, like Africans are less intelligent than Westerners. There have been other dubious psychological studies regarding race and intelligence, but the most rigorous of them, which was also just a survey of experts, showed that overall environmental factors are the biggest reason in international differences in intelligence, with education being the second largest reason, followed by genetics. But as we all know, there is no genetic basis for race. So good luck, assholes. Just because you're a scientist doesn't mean your racism's right. In conclusion, is there a scientific basis or definition for race? No. But race is still historically and sociopolitically significant. So do not use this video as an excuse to say stupid ass shit like, I don't see color. Or, you're the first brown girl I've ever been with. I'm, I'm so sorry, that's, that's my own shit.
Don't use this as an excuse for ignoring racism or for justifying racism. Because as we all know, different groups of people experience different levels of oppression and privilege. But scientific arguments to further the oppression of those people do not exist. So yes, you can take pride in your culture and your people and where you come from, but you cannot use science as a scapegoat for your racist bullshit. What does that mean for me? Well. I'm glad you asked. While you guys are out there protesting and participating in activist movements, I'm gonna find me some white supremacist inner cheeks to swab so I can send them their DNA results and watch their whole fucking worlds melt to the ground. Bitch, you can't beat us. Because you are us. Pretty sure I'm gonna get doxxed after this episode, so uh, gonna rename it episode two. We've had a good run.